Hello everyone, welcome back to the Flying Sandal channel. Today we have a short one just to show you an option for remote ID now that we're, you know, right upon the time when we all have to have remote ID. What I did is that I bought a device from a company called Drone Tag and I bought the, the Drone Tag BS, which of course elicits many funny comments from my friends at the club. It stands for Basic Solution. And let me show you what it is about. And here's the actual device. You get a little baggie like this in the mail, it comes in a padded envelope, and then you get the actual uh, drone tag BS device. You get two antennas. The one with the black insulation is the Bluetooth antenna. The one with the gray is the GPS antenna. You get that and you get the heat shrink. Now you don't get this, you have to make your own and you need to supply your own power. So I'm gonna use this battery, which is just a small LiPo, 3.7 volts. And you will probably need a kit like this. It's too bad that this doesn't come with at least a wiring harness. I, I can make it easily because I have these kits. These are from Amazon pre-crimped cable. Um, SH 1.0 is what you need. And so once you have that, you basically just use um, whatever plug is the right one. I'm using the one with three connectors, although I'm only using two. Um, you, you wire them like this with the power and the ground just as you see them here. Uh, there's a diagram that you can access on the drone tag website that shows you how it works. And then I just soldered um, XT30 connector onto it, which is what I already had on the battery. So you can, you can use whatever connector works for your battery. Okay, um, so what you're going to do is you're going to install the antennas and you're going to use the heat shrink. So this is what it looks like. The GPS antenna, when you have the connectors Facing up, GPS antenna goes on the right, Bluetooth antenna goes on the left, and then your power supply connects here on the... Um, there's only one connector where, where it will fit. The one on the left has a full UART, the one on the right is only for power. I'm only using power since I don't have any, any use for uh, talking to this or communicating with it. So let me plug this in, and I'm going to show you what it looks like. Uh, basically, it's going to look just like this, but then I'm going to show you how it connects onto the app and how you actually register it. Very well, so what I've done now is that I've plugged in the two antennas. You have to be really careful. These connectors are very delicate, so make sure you're plugging it in correctly, and then it should give you like a little click. Um, the other thing I did is I plugged this uh, wire into the plug, and you can see that the ground goes to the outside of the board. So pay attention to polarity. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over so we can see the status LEDs. And I'm just going to plug this into power. And you can see that the drone tag actually comes alive. So now I'm going to open the app on my phone and I'm going to show you what registering it looks like. I've already registered one, so I'm going to go through registering the second one. Okay, so I took my devices outside to do a quick test. And by the way, I did run this over the weekend with these batteries, the 300 milliamp hour 1S and 380 milliamp hour 1S. I ran them pretty much all day for about six hours. And this one came down to 3.7 volts and this one came down to 3.9 volts. So I ran them all day and I still had some battery left. So this one is another charge battery and I've had this device sitting here for a little while and it's kind of getting, uh, it's getting satellite information and I'm gonna open up the app and show you what that looks like. Here I am on the drone tag application and when I open it, basically on my account, I can register devices. So I have the one and I'm gonna register the new one. So it scans for Bluetooth and because the other one is turned on and on my desk, it's looking for it. So hopefully we'll find it soon, there it is. And so I tap on it and it just shows me the serial number, asks me to confirm and it's active. Okay, so I'm in the app and as soon as I come in, by default, this seems to think that there's a current ongoing flight. Uh, so let's go there and just see what's happening. So I'm receiving telemetry, I'm receiving status. Now, if I tap here on the X and I say fly now, what this is going to do is that it prepares a flight plan. I can click on confirm. And now I'm getting information about the device. I'm seeing a status, I'm seeing a telemetry, and I'm seeing other information, which is just the accuracy of the location and the speed. 
Now, if I grab the device and lift it in my hand, I can see the height changing. The altitude is calculating above sea level, but the height is from the uh, assumed takeoff location. So I can see that now that I lifted it, it's up in my arm, and I'm walking with it just a few feet. So I can see that it's getting some heading and speed information from where it can see the device moving. So I'm just walking a few feet here along the side of my house and I can see it moving. I'm going to turn around and bring it back in. And there we go, it's tracking the path that I'm tracing here with my steps. So we can see that the location is not super accurate. It's following better now that it's actually moving, whereas before there was some GPS drift and it was getting that GPS drift information. So now I've just set it back down on the bench and you can see that even though I trace the exact same steps going and coming back, there's a little bit of GPS drift, but it's transmitting the uh, remote ID information and I'm getting it here on my, on my app. There is some limitations with this. I tried it this weekend actually in flight and I could tell that when the flight was, you know, more than a couple of hundred feet, I would lose Bluetooth connectivity and then it would come back and go as the plane came by my location. But, you know, it, there's no, nothing that says that you have to have a super strong signal whenever you're flying. So I'm meeting the requirement. I am compliant with the remote ID requirement. And this device is small enough, I can put it in any of my planes. All right, so I hope this information is useful and that you find it informative and you can see that there's an easy way to comply with this and no need to, uh, you know, be too concerned about it. All right, so thank you very much. Please hit the like button, subscribe, and let me know if you like this video. Thank you and keep them up in the air.